Hi everyone, so today let's solve a difficult question called Pacific Atlantic Water Flow. So what does the question actually mean? Well, given m by n uh, to the growth, we have the Pacific Ocean uh, on the top and left uh, to the island, and we have the Atlantic Ocean, which is uh, to the right and bottom side of the island. Was the island is positioned into a growth, a square cell, and cell value, uh, so represent height above the sea. If the cell has uh, its, its value greater, uh, that are equal to uh, its neighbors. This means we can flow the water from the cell uh, to these neighbor cells. This question asks us to find uh, all cells uh, where we can flow the water from the cell to the oceans. Now let's check uh, this example, maybe use a uh, drawing here to come understand. Okay, so uh, you see here, we have the Pacific Ocean on the uh, top, we have Pacific Ocean on the left and the Atlantic Ocean uh, on the right and bottom boundary. Well, let's uh, the example of this cell. When this cell, if we traverse uh, top, we'll find, okay, this five is greater than this three, right? So water can flow from this five to this three. I also find, okay, this three is uh, greater than this two. So water can flow from this three to this two. And finally, we'll find, okay, this three is near the Pacific Ocean, so water can uh, flow into the Pacific Ocean. So from this understanding, the water from this cell can flow into a uh, Pacific Ocean on the top boundary. Now let's look at what works for the left boundary. Maybe use a different color to help me understand. Okay, so again we study this, uh, this cell again. We found okay this five is greater than this four, right? So we can flow water from this cell to uh, this cell. And then we found okay, this 4 is greater than this 2, so we can uh, flow water from this 4 to this 2, and this 2 is near the Pacific Ocean, so we also can flow water into the Pacific Ocean uh, for the left boundary. Now let's check the right boundary. So I use different color. And again, study 5, you see 5 is greater than 3, so water can flow from 5 to 3, and 3 is greater than 1, so 3 to 1, and finally into the Atlantic Ocean. So the right boundary, we can see uh, water uh, can run this out into the Atlantic Ocean. And finally, let's check the bottom boundary. Okay, so I use uh, this blue color. So starting at this phi, okay, phi is obviously greater than this one, so we can flow. And here we check, okay, this y is equal to this one. But we know if the height is equal, we can still flow the water, so the water can flow from this cell to this cell. And finally, this cell is near the Atlantic Ocean, so this cell will flow down to the Atlantic Ocean. So now we have fine, okay, this cell can uh, flow both uh, to the top direction, left direction, the right direction, and the bottom direction. So you satisfy results, and we have to append uh, to, to our result array. Now we have getting some intuitions. Uh, let's think about how to solve this problem. If you have watched my previous video, you will now uh, I would prefer depth of search to solve this kind of problem, which is efficient and easy to understand. Well, our intuition is that, so let me use a graph drawing here. Well, we will start uh, at both oceans, uh, so the top Pacific Ocean, the left Pacific Ocean, uh, the bottom we have Atlantic, and the right we have Atlantic Ocean. If you start both oceans and we want to traverse back, right? For example, we traverse uh, to this ocean, uh, to these two, then to this three, uh, then to this five. Because we're traversing back, uh, instead of uh, decreasing height, we want the height to increase. Okay, So height should be increased along the way from the ocean uh, to the sea. Or maybe we have uh, equal height, it's okay. If that's the case, we can uh, traversing back from the ocean to that specific cell. So in other words, it means the water can flow from that specific cell uh, to the ocean. Okay, this is the intuition of depth search. Uh, now let's uh, dive into the coding part. Okay, so this code is relatively long, so uh, instead of writing it line by line, uh, I will display all the code and explain to save your time. Now let's start in at the helper function. Well, as I explained before, uh, we should use the depth search approach uh, for this kind of problem. Our intuition is here. We'll start at four borders. Uh, we'll check all the cells and neighbors. If okay, this cell neighbor satisfies requirements, uh, which means we can traverse back from the ocean to the cell's neighbors. This means water can flow from this cell to neighbors and to the ocean. And we want to append this valid cell to our results. 
And now, uh, let, let's check how to write code. Well, first, we we'll try the hard code definition uh, for the current height, which is the height at specific row and colon. Well, why did we do that? Because uh, there's a possibility that we'll violate the corner cases uh, in the later code. So use a hard code definition. Well, now we have uh, tried hard code definition. Let's filter out the three corner cases. The first corner case is that our row and columns are actually outside of the boundary. So if that is the case, we immediately return now. And the second case, uh, it found, okay, the height is decreasing from the ocean to the cell, which means uh, we have an increasing height from the cell to the ocean. If that is the case, uh, we cannot flow the water uh, from the cell to the ocean, and we also have to return now. And the final corner case is that we found the specific cell is already in our visit set. If that is the case, we have to return now to avoid uh, any duplicate bits. And once finish, okay, these corner cases, this means we have uh, increasing height from the ocean to the cell. Uh, the cell did not visit it and still in bound. Then we have to add this cell to a visited set to avoid uh, revisit in the future. And finally, we also need to uh, check neighbors. So this is uh, uh, the bottom neighbor. This is the top neighbor. Uh, this is the right neighbor. And this is the next neighbor. Okay, now finish the diverse search uh, function. Uh, let's think about how to solve the main function. So I will temporarily hide this diverse search uh, function. And here's the main function. Let me uh, scroll down. Okay, so first we need a result array to restore all valid cells. And then we have to initialize a set for the Pacific Ocean and also the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, so we can record the temporary results. And after that, also I have to write the row. Uh, the total rows and total columns to save some uh, coding the later parts. And now, finish initialization, let's think how to solve this problem uh, in coding. Well, first, as mentioned before, we have to check the top and bottom row. So, usually, the top row is Pacific Ocean and the uh, bottom row is Atlantic Ocean. So, uh, for these rows, we want to traverse all the columns. They want to call the diverse search function. So, for the top row, we want to pass row and zero and pass this column. And then the visit set is Pacific Ocean because Pacific Ocean is on the top row. And then the height I uh, should use in this row and call it. And same for the bottom row. Uh, we want to use row minus one to indicate, okay, it's end of row. And uh, this one we should use at Atlantic Ocean because uh, the bottom boundary is at Atlantic Ocean. And then we'll pass these variables. Now finish the top and bottom row. Let's check the left and right column. So for left and right column, uh, we want to visit all rows, right? And then for the left boundary, you see here, uh, we have Pacific Ocean on the left and Atlantic Ocean for the right. So for the left boundary, we just pass in the rows and we set colon equal to zero indicate the first colon. And then we pass Pacific Ocean and uh, the height. And for the right colon, uh, we also inherit this row, but with the colon equals colon minus one to indicate uh, it's the last colon. And then we set VT set equal to Atlantic Ocean and pass in the height. And once you finish all uh, top and bottom rows and left and right rows, we want to see uh, which cell exactly match our requirements, so we have to append it to results, right? So to do this, we'll traverse every row and columns uh, in this uh, 2D growth. We found, okay, this specific cell is both in the Pacific Ocean and in the Atlantic Ocean. This means water can uh, flow from uh, this cell to both the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean, right? In this, uh, way we have to append this specific cell uh, to our result because it's a valid cell. And finally, we return our result, it should be done. Now let's submit the code. Okay, so the code works. Uh, the runtime memory usage is not bad. And I think uh, relatively this is easy to understand. Okay, you, if you like this video, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.